guess not a lot of people wanted to show up for my presentation, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, but for those of you who are here, I do want to share a fun fact with you. Since 2006, 3.9 million American athletes have stopped playing sports due to anxiety, depression, stress. Kids lose the true meaning of what youth sports is all about. Uh, studies show that when times get tough, athletes tend to just quit the sport and stop playing. My name is Ryan Lover, and I'm the co-founder of Camp 55, and my goal this semester was to bring back the true meaning of what youth sports is all about. To give a small background of um, what my football history looks like, I played for over 10 years of football, and trust me, I did not like it, actually. In fact, up until I was about 12 years old, I didn't even really like playing football. I just kind of like skip out of practice and not really want to train. Um, but as I progressed, I dedicated it to my life. Um, I became a two-time All-State running back, uh, captain of the 2022 Bowl football team, and a thousand-yard rusher my junior and senior year. Um, football ended up becoming a huge part of my life. Um, it became like a daily motivation to me. It was the reason I had to get up in the morning and train and stay in shape. Um, but it also became like therapy to me. As soon as I put that helmet on, it was like I blocked out all problems in my life and I just had to focus on what was in front of me. So studies show that the overall major impact on sports and just working out in general um, it has a huge positive impact. Um, it actually releases something called happy chemicals called endorphins that make you more uppy and more relaxed after um, like football practice or a workout. Sports also lower stress levels, depression levels, anxiety, and suicidal behavior levels significantly. By facing adversity, it constructs strong mental and physical attributes. So how has football impacted me personally? It has shown me how to face adversity, you know, playing from 100 degree weather to negative five degree weather. It really gives you a strong attribute and really builds character. Now you may think that is a very bad thing to be practicing in that stuff, but it is very beneficial in the long run. Your mind becomes more clear afterwards and it makes you feel like you have actually done something. So the main purpose of Camp 55 was to show athletes what youth football has taught me. I wanted to teach them basic skills, condition the athletes in preparation for the season, and I also wanted to learn how to manage and coach a football program myself. But most importantly, I wanted to be able to give back to my boat community. And the process was not that easy. Over 40 hours of preparation, that's meeting with boat youth football coaches, uh, merchandise, uh, sending emails to parents and um, coaches, but also organizing the field uh, for the upcoming practices. And we also had over 50 camp hours. Uh, that's five weekends of camp um, and over five hours of session. That's preparation and cleanup. So how did Camp 55 affect the mental and physical health of uh, the youth athletes? It taught them how to face adversity by pushing through various workouts and conquer various challenges individually and as a group. It also gives the athletes a chance to hang out and interact with each other during the summer and get some outdoor time while they're at home for the summer. So my measurement of success uh, was uh, a total of 60 signups um, from Bo and surrounding towns. We had lots of positive feedback. I had emails from parents and coaches thanking me for how much of an impact it had on them. So the ending goal for me was to give back to the youth football program, what the youth football program has given to me. And one of the biggest things I wanted to teach the athletes was setting yourself up mentally and physically for the future by facing adversity and also learning how to become a leader and a team player on and off the field. But for me personally, I wanted to give back to my boat community what the boat community has given to me. I also want to explain the meaning behind the 55. Um, as all of you know, um, Nick and Gavin Roulette, who passed away um, in September of 2021, um, I played football with Nick for as long as I can remember, and um, I've known him for a long time, and uh, I wanted to keep their name and their passion going. Um, 
again, I wanted to keep Nick and, and Nick's name and number in, in the program, and I'm going to continue doing Camp 55 in the future um, to keep their name and, and um, number alive. And um, so, thank you for coming to my talk, and I'm open to any questions. Yes, I will be doing it for the next few years, actually, until I won't be able to do it anymore. So, yeah. Who else did you do it with? Oh, my, so my co-partner, I, I actually wanted to mention his name um, in the slide, but I couldn't really fit it in anywhere, but uh, Teddy Feifel. He was my, my co-captain, I guess. So. Thank you. Good. Nice Thank you. You can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. Maya Angelou. Creativity is something that everybody has. It's something that can be expressed in so many different ways. Some of these include pottery, art, writing, poetry. In my case, CAD. Hi, my name is Vanessa Hood, and today I'm going to be talking about my essential question. What is CAD? and how does it influence careers other than engineering? So, let's start simple. What is CAD? CAD stands for Computer Aided Design, and it is pretty much a online, well, some, of, some programs are online, some of them are um, uh, app-based, it depends on the, the um, software, I use an online software, but it is a computer-based software where you can, down, you can um, design anything and export it into a variety of different files. Based on these files, you can upload it to different machines, and depending on the machine, if you can get different outcomes, including cutting out different items using a CNC machine or 3D printing different items using a 3D printer. That's just two of very many uses of CAD. So, what is so stereotyped about it? Well, people mainly associate CAD with engineering, though, of course, there's many different uses of CAD. So, what did I do? Because clearly, I didn't use CAD for direct design in my senior project. So let's backtrack. I spent my semester propagating plants, which is completely unrelated to CAD issues, but not really. Firstly, I sent out a survey and received information on what teachers would be able to provide plant clippings for me to learn to propagate and be able to take and learn that whole process. And then simultaneously, I also catted the entire library, as seen at the very, I don't know what light pointer is, as seen at the very top. That was the first iteration in CAD. I took the measurements from the library, and then I measured out each individual little item and put it into CAD, realized that was way more information than I needed. And then after I put all that information into CAD, decided that was a lot more than I could ever need and I simplified it. So here's the same thing. It has all the same 
measurements, but it's in a more block type fashion. And then it's color coded. So as seen in yellow, so like right here and right here is where there's direct lighting in the library. And then as seen on in red, or like a reddish orange is right here and here, which is where there's a like indirect light. And as seen in the blue, there is um, less light. So going back, the, back to the plants, this corresponds with each other because <laughs> the different plants require a different amount of light. So I had to learn about what each individual plant and the lighting needs for them. And within this, I had to propagate them accordingly and then place them in the li library accordingly after. So after propagating them, I, well, in order to propagate them, I had to clip them, put, uh, put them in water, so that's what is right here. Once they had enough roots, they ended up getting potted, and then once they were potted, they were put in the library as seen right here. I also added, of course, a little bit of detail by painting the pots and adding resin dye um, into the container afterwards. So I got my community hours by receiving the plant clippings from teachers and talking to various teachers about how they take care of their plants as well as where they got their plants and what information they had on them. So you might see this little, this little thing in the corner. That's just to be a typical use of CAD, so to say, because most people wouldn't think of blueprinting an area as a typical use of CAD. They would see that as, oh, that's, I guess, another way to do it. So ju I just wanted to show that I do, in fact, know how to use CAD as most engineers would, in fact, use it. So I made a plant holder, which would be an idea of how to do it. And I was going to make it, but just kind of right out of time. Um, essentially, the idea behind that is you would use two by fours and would be able to use macrame string to attach a plant to a plant pot to it. Moving on. So knowing this, who can use CAD? Well, there's an obvious answer. Anyone. I spent the semester researching and researching all about this, and I learned quite a bit. I learned about many careers that I didn't even think used CAD, and some of these include forensics, dentistry, and a variety of other careers. So one of my sources, CAD slash CAM services, stated, while it's common knowledge that CAD slash CAM technology is used in ACE functions, architecture, engineering, construction, as well as in manufacturing, it's interesting to note that there are other less well-known areas that make use of CAD slash CAM technology. It's industry and dress design, just to name two. In fact, nearly any industry that produces a tangible product or device makes use of CAD slash CAM in one of its many forms. And I just thought to make note of that because um, CAD slash CAM, uh, both, both of which I did, I do, I am fully aware, I did just mention CAD. CAM is something very similar. It is computer-aided uh, machining, if I'm correct, something along that line. Um, very similar to CAD, though. But to, to summarize, there's so many careers that can use CAD. So it's just really interesting how people some, like, don't even realize the vast majority of them. So another very important thing to mention is in an interview with my mom, who is a real estate agent and a teacher, she mentioned that she thinks not only that students should be able to learn CAD, but be, that, that she would use it in both of her jobs if she was able to learn it when she was younger. And I think that that was really interesting to note how she would be able to use it as a teacher to set up her classroom and in real estate to be able to get a better image of what the house would look like before actually seeing it in person. So I just talked quite a bit. Some of my key points being, you can't just restrict a computer designing software to one career or stereotype it in any way or manner. So I don't see why a school can't offer a cl class that's just computer aided design or something that isn't just included in engineering. I don't see why it should be classified as just engineering. So. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Matt? What's your favorite CAD program? So personally, I use Onshape because it's super easy to use. Um, it is online, so it gives a very easy 
uh, manner that way. It also can run on practically anything, so I can run it on the school Chromebook without having to worry about it crashing super easily. So that really helps. Nice job. So there's actually a variety of ways. I learned it through robotics as a first, but there's so many tutorials online of how, like, we learned CAD and robotics through tutorials. There's, depending on what CAD software you end up using, it, there's tutorials specifically for it. Thank you, Vanessa. You got this. Do it. 